Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. Finally, I have my game uh, capture device, my USB composite uh, NES video capture device. This will now allow me to uh, record footage from one of the many game systems I have. And today, I'm going to be talking about this purchase. Now, I bought this at a car boot sale, a uh, yard sale if you're in America. Um, I believe I paid £2 or £4 for it. It was definitely a steal. It's basically a TV game system. It plugs in uh, via the composite connections. Um, let me show them without trying to disturb the camera too much. There we go. Composite connections. It takes um, four AA batteries here in the back, on switch, um, DC power supply, and on the front, a and B buttons replicated both sides for left-handed or right-handed, a menu button that takes you back to the main menu, and a reset button. I'm not sure what the reset button does. The menu button pretty much functions as a reset button. So without any further ado, let's go and have a look at the games. First up, Space Invaders. Um, as far as I can tell, all the games on this unit are produced by Taito and they all range from between 1978 and 1980. So, uh, Space Invaders were released in 1978. It features a tank at the bottom of the screen shooting lasers at the progressing hordes of aliens at the top. Every time the aliens reach the edge of the screen, they descend a level, working their way towards the bottom. Once they reach the bottom of the screen, it's game over for you. The tank itself is protected by several bunkers um, and players can often use a tactic of shooting their own bunker shields uh, away, but obviously that leaves you exposed. That's pretty much as far as tactics go in this. Uh, the only other uh, thing to bear in mind is to shoot where the aliens will be in the moment because you have to take into account your laser bullets at travel time. Lunar Rescue, uh, November 1979 release. Basic premise, you start at the top of the screen, docked inside a mothership. You have to work your way through an asteroid shield, uh, asteroid shield, or an asteroid field even, um, to get to the surface on the moon, on which there are several landing pads that once you reach, uh, these little dudes will jump into your ship. You work your way back up through a whole uh, series of flying saucers, a bit like a uh, strange frogger. If you uh, hold down your shooting button, you can get a speed boost to uh, accelerate you into trouble more than safety, usually. And if you actually collide with the mothership while you've got uh, one of these guys you're rescuing, they'll fall off and say, ah! So that's fun. Features a lot more colour than the original Space Invaders and does have a strange colour banding effect which is quite reminiscent of the Sinclair Spectrum. Once you've rescued all six people, or indeed killed all six people, the level is over and then the game starts again. As far as I can tell, the difference between the levels um, really is just down to speed.
Colony 7 is Tato's take on Tari's Missile Command. Uh, this features two bases, one on the left and one on the right, fighting against hordes of aliens. You move the crosshair around with the joystick. Basically, uh, you've got two weapons. One button is this gun that you're seeing now. It's um, not really got any special features apart from there's a, a radius around the crosshair in which the, it will uh, take out the enemies. If you use the second button on the unit, you'll get uh, a, a missile that uh, fires out bullets or pixels in a radial fashion. Apparently this game in the arcade featured a microtransaction system, according to Wikipedia, in which you could purchase different weapons. So I've not been able to select any different weapon than this one. But I'll look out for maybe there's a combination or holding down button which might allow you access to some. Kicks is another 1981 game and it's absolutely awesome. This has to be my favourite game of the bunch. Basically, you're a line drawing tank, I suppose, if you want to use your imagination. And you're being chased along the lines by what my kids call spiders, um, but I guess they're some other kind of tank. We're nearly not sure here. Even the arcade art and graphic design uh, is as abstract as what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, but the aim of the game is really to use your slow drawing or fast drawing. You get more points for a, a slow filled area to draw out these blocks of area on the screen. As soon as you claim a certain percentage of the screen you've won and you progress to the next level where it gets a little bit harder and a little bit faster. My favourite technique is to try to split the screen in half right away at the beginning and then slowly work my way uh, around. Stepping back a year to 1980, Phoenix. This game seemed to really stand out for me in this whole compilation because it featured some really nice background graphics. The aliens are really amazingly uh, animated. You have a shield. It's got varied rounds. It even has a boss at the end. Um, so yeah, I think this, this sort of represented a real quantum leap in the sort of gameplay that was available at the time. The first two rounds are shooting uh, aliens in formation, much like Space Invaders. Every once in a while they do a kamikaze bombing run at you. Rounds three and four, as you'll see now, feature a, a different type of gameplay. These flying eggs uh, seem to grow and hatch in front of your eyes. You do, uh, kill the uh, birds that appear. Interestingly enough, you can actually wound these, so if you uh, knock off a wing, the birds can continue to attack you, and if you leave them a while, the wings will grow back, so it's got quite a nice pace. The fifth round is actually fighting the mothership, and this is really complicated. It's got this huge shield at the bottom that you've got to blast through, and then the rotating shield which you've got to take chunks out of. This is actually a pretty uh, tough boss to beat. Uh, I don't think I've actually beaten it yet. I assume you have to get to the uh, little purple uh, area in the middle of the mothership to win, but I've never actually succeeded. So as you can see, the games are fantastic. 
Um, I think you can pick this up on eBay for various prices, probably up to £20. Um, if you're into the old classic games, definitely it's worth getting. Um, I think it's a little bit more um, fun to have than some of the Atari flashback type games which have separate joysticks, separate power supplies. Everything's all in one. Leave it by your TV. And if your kids are like mine, and mine are four, ages two and four, they really love this. And they're really into playing this facing game. Uh, my eldest son really loves Phoenix. Um, so that's, uh, it's quite nice seeing them playing those. And uh, it keeps them off the Xbox. So there you go, Space Invaders. Thanks for watching.